Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to a brand new edition of the Fro Ballers Podcast. My name is Adi Shapiro Lajide. I'm joined every week by my brother, DJ Wilds. We are live at the Ennish Studios in central London, Covent Garden to be exact. And this is supported by Ennish Restaurant, Ennish Radio, Energy God Drinks. And this is where we break down the hardest headlines and break down any topic across sports, but looking through the prism of the African, Afro-Caribbean, African-American sphere. This is where we break down our topics, speaking about our players, our athletes, the way nobody else will do it. So if you've not subscribed, hit the follow button, the subscription button, share this podcast with anybody that deserves to know about our athletes. Now, for the last couple of weeks, we've been, uh, since we launched the Fro Ballers podcast, it was launched to put a spotlight on what was going on in the African Cup of Nations uh, in Ivory Coast, look a little bit closely at the competition, the first competition within football in Africa, the once in two years competition that gets us Africans so excited. And I've been very happy that we've done that very closely. Yes. Before we get into the hot topics, uh, mm. Walls, what are your thoughts about the AFCON coverage and the fact that we launched the Footballers podcast during this very important time? Um, I'm happy you came up and... Um... I think this is the best um, uh, Afcon edition we've ever had, mm. and we can see the passions all all supporters and fans of each countries of them are them put in. Uh, we we fought, we threw like memes around <laughs> against each other. It got everybody excited. <laughs> yeah, you know, at the end get... of the day, we all won. Absolutely, and I love the togetherness we we saw in this edition because it literally, regardless of whatever the economy is saying in Africa currently, people are trying to leave, uh, people are suffering, but this game um, brought, brought us together. Galvanized us. Yeah. Now let's talk about the competition in itself. Uh, over the last couple of days, the third place match took place as well as the AFCON finals. Before we go into the AFCON finals, I want us to talk about the third place match, which featured South Africa and the Republic uh, Congo. of Congo. Um, two teams that a lot of people never expected to have found in the last four oh, yeah. of such fact, a huge... four teams. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but let's talk about DRC and South Africa first. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of criticism locally for South Africa because in football, they've had probably one of the best structures in African football yes. over the last 20 years. They've had a lot of international players that have played not only uh, at the highest level in the Premier League, playing for clubs like Manchester United, yeah. Leeds, playing for Tottenham, the list goes on. But in the last decade, they've somehow fallen short of the heights that the local fan base expect them to be at. Um, however, this championship saw a completely different side to South Africa, a rejuvenated side, um, footballing, a footballing side that played free-flowing football. They scored a lot of goals. They were a threat attacking-wise. Yes. Their midfield was extremely strong and very potent. Their defense was very solid, and we saw what the goalkeeper did. Mm -hmm. Saving, you know, penalties. penalties. <laughs> Talk to me about that match that put these two... Very exciting teams, DRC as well, uh, together, and what you expected the outcome to be, and what the final result was. It was it was a good game. So I, I saw the game, and um, I wanted DRC to win mm. because they 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 from day one they showed they showed yeah they a showed different yeah, energy a different they energy. showed they what came, the Afcon was yes, about. They came to the competition ready, but they lack one thing: finishing. So, yep. and that really cost them the third place. Mm. I saw the game and I was like, oh, wow, because they missed a lot of chances. Their forwards missed a lot. One-on-ones, I was like, no. Nah. And we all know how that kind of a game ends when it gets to penalty. And um, I wasn't surprised when um, um, the South African goalkeeper saved the, after they've gone like... But again, I was actually surprised. So if you didn't see the match, if you've been living on that rock, and um, both teams went head to head and eventually the match went into overtime yeah. and 
finally penalties. penalties. And even when it went to penalties, South Africa only won on penalties after one penalty was saved. saved. Which the, 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 the first, the first round, five, yeah. the first round of penalties, all players scored, scored their, their goals. Their goals until uh, the Congolese player obviously had their saved. I didn't see that coming because for what we had seen in the competition previously of the South African goalkeeper, everybody's expecting this brother to be incredible when it comes yeah. to penalty saves. But it looked like even the underrated Congolese, Congolese team still had his number up to a point. Yeah, but again, you, you don't, when it comes to games, you don't want it to get to that point. Yes, yes. And that's why you have to always take your chances, which is what we never had with the Super Eagles. Yeah. So I think that really cost the... Because if they had won that game yesterday, it would change a lot in their country. Mm, in DRC? Yes, it, it will. It would uplift the it football will, inside. Yes, it, it will, will. open up At the minds once, of the agents. Because, yeah, because they, they've been, you know, going through some kind of wars. Absolutely, recently. absolutely. And recently they, they, there was a... There was uh, something that happened, I believe it was in Goma, yes. uh, where li lots of lives were lost. Yeah. So if they had won that yesterday, I'm sure... That would have At least even if it's just two days happiness for would them, have... that would have meant a lot for them, so, or to them. So but they still did well. But exactly. Now, what I wanted to say is, like you said correctly, uh, when we're introducing uh, today's podcast, nobody expected the four teams to be in the semifinals, yeah. let alone the finals. finals. Let's talk about what this um, semifinals and third place match does for South African and Congolese football mm. separately. What do you think this achievement of even competing in these final stages of such a huge competition like the AFCON does to their football footballing industries. It's, a, it's a it's a massive ad advantage for the Congolese because they will build on what they have currently yep. to prepare for the next one. Now the confidence, the belief is there that look Th we, we can, can do, do it. it. Yes. So it happened and we can do it in the next one. And for South Africa, I like the fact that they've gone back to their drawing board to pick some of their own base players yep. well to, to to showcase them in this tournament. Um They've got a fantastic league. I expect uh, South, Af uh, South Africa to be the Egypt of the old, old the olden days, yeah, like yeah, where yeah. Zamalek used to dominate. Yes, the African Al Champions Ali League. And the, so, yeah. I believe with the with the professional leagues the South Africans have got, they can literally field a first 20, local eleven, yeah, and that will be and strong that enough. Will win, that will win the Afcon. So, I want to see them build on this. And um, I hope when they come back for the next one, they will be like proper, proper prepared. Because it was the only missed the final with a slight yeah. um, thing against Nigeria. Absolutely. Thus, yeah. So Now let's talk about the finals. Uh, this is the one match that the entire world has been uh, yeah. looking forward to. Nigeria having a rematch with the host nation, the oh, Ivory Coast. Um, in Abidjan, packed out stadium, as I had predicted, was going to probably be one of the toughest matches that Nigeria ever played at the AFCON Championships, playing it, not only a home nation at the finals, but also a home nation that you had defeated a couple weeks prior. Ivory Coast wanted uh, revenge. There was an opportunity to do something that was going to lift the spirit of the Ivorian fans, yeah. the national uh, kind of pride. The country had spent billions of dollars investing in preparing for this AFCON championships. Yeah. And this was probably a way not only to, to pay back the, the government for their investment, but also to reward the fans for their support. To the people. How did you see the match? Um, I, wasn't, I wasn't surprised because... In our previous um, episode, I'd already said it that um, it's go everything's going to just be against the but Super Eagles. But you thought Eagles. the Super Eagles had what it took to win? If we, if we see, like, from the game, 
from the very first minute, the Ivorians wanted him more. They had 68% of yes. possession. Well, let's be to, honest to about this. Well. To Nigeria's 32%. They had 18 shots. To Nigeria's eight. They had eight shots on target. To Nigeria's one. Yeah. You know, in every single department, they the Ivorians wanted won. it more. They wanted it more. And um, again, we all see, we, 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 we could see in the stadium, it was 99% orange or what's their color again absolutely and i could not even hear the nigerian fans and there's there's like reports out there saying a lot of nigerians wanted to buy the tickets but they were refused i think that's bad but again you gotta do what you gotta do to win the game and we forgot that football in the art of the ivorians is a sacred thing because football literally stopped a lot of civil war in their country absolutely so I knew it, was, it wasn't going to be a, 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 an easy game for us. And everything was going to be against us. We could tell from the refereeing, from the crowd. And I love how the crowd supported to be their honest, own team. To be honest with you, um, I think all what you said should have been expected. We discussed that yeah. here. Uh, it was a national pride thing. It was Ivory Coast in the finals. Mm-hmm. This was an opportunity to win the AFCON championships and, and really give something back to the fans. However, both teams had an opportunity presented to them to win the title. Nigeria had, until the final, I believe, the best defense yeah. in the in the entire competition. And the last two AFCON championships was won by teams that only considered two goals in the entire championship. Which is... In comes Nigeria. Nigeria. Nigeria had the potentials. However, on the day, as you said, the most important players on the Ivorian team were the most, you know, uh, how am I going to put it? The most productive players, the strikers. The you know, you had the likes of Kessie, you had yeah. the likes of Ndiga, you had the likes of, you know, these players, Ahala. These were the players that the team looked up to and they delivered. The wings were busy. Yes. The striker was keeping our defenders busy. The midfield was controlling know, the I midfield. I know couldn't keep up. I know couldn't keep Whereas <laughs> the most productive players on the Nigerian side was the defenders. And everybody going forward ahead of the defenders found it difficult, difficult. within the game. Now, a lot of criticism has been thrown towards the strikers and the midfielders. Mm. But how about we speak about the, the selection? Going into such a huge match, mm. scoring first by who has turned out to be the player of the tournament in Ekong, in 38 minutes, yeah. scoring for Nigeria. At that point, the coach had one thing, thing to, to do. do. Coming back from for the second half, looking at shoring the midfield or adding a little bit more value to the defense and adding a little bit more threat to the attack. However, he didn't do that until after the Ivorians yeah, had scored, scored the, the second goal, goal yeah. in the 81st minute. How about we level some criticism, serious questions at the feet of the coach and his tactical team who made decisions that, in my opinion, cost Nigeria in such a very difficult position playing against the home side at the finals. But we've seen it from day one. We've only said it on this post- on this podcast. We've seen it to say, tactically, I don't think he's the right guy. Yep. Because yesterday we saw a lot of loopholes in the Ivorian defense because they all wanted to come out. Everybody was ready to play ball. Yes. And it was just Osime on his own against them. If we had a creative uh, midfielder yeah. that feeds Osime constantly yesterday, he would have scored. But now, the only creative midfielder we had, which is um, it will be. It will be the coach told him to play defense. And this is it why I don't be. get why a lot of people went for it will be. Because he was That's playing wrong. to instructions. He was playing to instruction. I know it will be well. That's not his position. Absolutely. He started as a winger at Arsenal. Yeah. And then when he went to Everton, he played a little bit behind the and striker. And see what he's doing currently with in Fulham. Fulham. So if a coach is telling you to play a defensive game, you can't go against the coach. That is not his position. In the first game, we saw the passes it will be made. 
A lot of people forget that. And, yeah, and, and this is one thing about we Nigerians, we are bad losers. I thought. And <laughs> such a short memory as well. Yes. So we should literally cut the guy um, some so slack. Yeah, let's just leave him alone. He played to instructions. All the players did well. There were some like few mistakes. It happens. Let's talk let's about. Let's move on from it. Let's talk about both goals though, that the Ivorian scored. Yeah. A similar header, uh, to equalize. But what a fantastic touch by Sebastian Haller to score the winning goal. How about that? At the beginning of the game, I was broadcasting live and I, I said something. I said, the only problem I have, or I'm going to have that yesterday, was um, Allah. This guy the is... Quality. The quality. The is quality is a dangerous player. The quality that any defender wants to play with. We've seen it when, when he plays for his club. Absolutely. He has the quality of Drogba. Yes, yeah, a quality Don't player. Don't him. Yeah. And we all saw it yesterday. And it was Ekon behind him. Absolutely. There was nothing Ekon could do. Because he thought, like, he was thinking one step ahead of Ekon. So I wouldn't blame... I wouldn't blame anybody for it because that's a striker's goal. That's a proper that's striker. That's a proper striker. So I'm not blaming mm. the goalkeeper. I'm not blaming anybody. How about they the, deserve a win? How about congratulations once again to to the Ivory Coast for putting and up to <laughs> yeah, for putting up a fantastic <laughs> competition and you know ultimately picking up the top prize with the difficulties and challenges that they had. They sacked their coach after their group. Uh, match because they hadn't done well. They managed to get into the knockout stages through a stroke of luck using their assistant coach who is a Ivorian national and ultimately won the championships. What do you have to say about, you know, the resilience of the team, the players, and even the supporters for carrying them that long? Um, so when it comes to football, I always say if you want it, you can get it. Hmm. They showed more. In, they showed more. You know, more interest in saying, "Look, we don't want nothing except when they get, when they had that opportunity to they get into the it. knockout, they took it because that was just like they were out. It was just they only had Absolutely. a thin line. Absolutely. So I'm not. I'm not surprised they wanted it. I'm not surprised they won it. And um, we could see in the in 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 the players um, thing because if. If our Nigerian players had shown that a little bit more, a little bit more. Trust me. And I, I wonder when I saw a video where Mourinho was saying, "Oh, our coach was his childhood friend," blah blah. blah. So I'm like, after that one day, why didn't you pack the bus like Mourinho does? That's what a friend of mine said. He said, yeah. "That's where he it's going wrong." Yeah. This is the home team. They are in their country. Ninety nine percent of all the people in the stadium yesterday was um, the Ivorians. Yeah. And you now had the opportunity to score a goal and you're not packing the bus. People are going to talk, but we don't care. What about um, the roasting that Nigeria has received uh, since the defeat by Ivory Coast? You know, my phone was bombarded. Uh, not only I had not only Afro B, but all the women and men that I know from the Ivory Coast <laughs> made sure I felt it. And my Ghanaian brothers and sisters yes, as well. Cameroonians, everyone. They, yeah. What about the roasting? I think Nigeria has had a big mouth, and this was an opportunity to stick it to Nigerians. Well, what what they, what they tend to, what they tend to forget is um, before they even roasted us. As soon as the Ivorians equalized this day, we started cussing ourselves. Anyway. So whatever they said to us, we're just laughing at it because we're like, okay, we've heard it before. So it didn't really do anything on on, on us. We even took it and we and started embraced. laughing. We yeah, embraced yeah, yeah, yeah. it. So yeah. and that's part of the game. Absolutely. We love it. So a majority of us have apologized <laughs> and say, let's forgive and forget, you know. <laughs> Listen, it's football. It's, it's football. <laughs> well, this is the Footballers Podcast where we discuss sports and enjoy Food. some of the food from any restaurants in central London. Until next time, when we'll be breaking down more hot topics in sports, let me talk into my fried yam and fried plantain whilst I enjoy my pepper sauce. From Adi Chopin and DJ Walls, it's peace, peace. and we're out.